How often are we told to look for answers in Genesis? But Genesis has some answers we don't hear about too often. For example, can a two-year-old get a girl pregnant? Yes, Genesis does indeed have the answer. But one has to dig a little to uncover this tale. So bear with me as we find the answer in Genesis. Now, to save time, I will show the passages on the screen while I discuss the relevant details. Isaac lives to be 180 years old. Isaac is 60 years old when Jacob is born. Jacob and family move to Egypt when Jacob is 130 years old. So Isaac would be 60 plus 130 that's 190 years old when the family moves to Egypt. But since he only lived to be 180, that means he has been dead 10 years. So from the death of Isaac to the family moving to Egypt, 10 years will pass. And what an eventful 10 years those are going to be. Let us follow that timeline. The family is in Mamre near Hebron at the time of Isaac's death. In chapter 36, Esau moves far away, and then we learn all about his begats. So it's not until chapter 37 that the real thrills begin. Joseph, without his amazing technicolor dream coat, is sold into slavery. And then his brothers lead Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, to believe Joseph is dead. Well, at least Joseph's grandpa Isaac didn't live to see such things. How long Isaac has been dead, the Bible doesn't say exactly, but to be as generous to the Bible as we can, let us say it is the very next day. That leaves us with ten years to work with, probably much less, but we are being generous. At the same time that Joseph gets sold into slavery, Judah moves away from the rest of the family to live closer to one of his friends, apparently. While there, Judah meets up with the daughter of a man named Shua. Apparently her name, if she has one, isn't important since the Bible doesn't tell us what it is. But Judah marries her anyway. Only after marrying his no-name bride does Judah have sex with her, and she gets pregnant. Again, being as generous as we can, let us say she gets pregnant on their wedding day and nine months later has a boy named Ur. Then, in a separate pregnancy, she has Onan. But the Bible doesn't say how far apart the two boys are born. Though biologically most unlikely, to again be as generous to the story as we can, let us say she gets pregnant with Onan the same day she gives birth to Ur. So those back-to-back -back sons take up 18 months or one and a half years to get themselves begotten. And so we now have eight and a half years left until the whole family moves to Egypt. Judah and family move to Kazib, or however that's pronounced, where the no-name wife gives birth to yet another son whom they name Shelah. That takes up another nine months, leaving us with seven years, nine months, and likely much less. Judah gets Ur a wife named Tamar, but God kills Ur before he has any kids. So Judah orders Onan to make out with Tamar to give a legal heir for Ur. But Onan spills his seed rather than have a son with Tamar, so God kills him too. Now Sheila is too young for marriage, so Judah sends Tamar back to her father to wait until Sheila is old enough. The Bible doesn't say how long it was from Sheila's birth until these events took place. So let us use our get out of contradiction free card and say it all happened on the day Sheila was born. So we won't take off any time at all for these events. The Bible says a long time passes and then Judah's no-name wife dies. By this time Sheila is all grown up despite being less than eight years old. But Judah hasn't sent him to do his begetting duties with Tamar. 
The Bible doesn't say just how much time has passed or how old Sheila is, so let's be really, really generous with the Bible and say he was four years old. That leaves us with three years, nine months before the big move to Egypt. It turns out Tamar still wants to have some children, so she pretends to be a prostitute and has twins named Perez and Zera by none other than Judah, her father-in-law. That takes another nine months, so we are down to three years until the whole family moves to Egypt. So Judah now has new sons, but since he had them by his daughter-in-law, they are also his grandsons. So I guess that makes him his grandson sons. And don't forget Sheila and Judah's other two boys that somehow managed to get themselves begotten, grow up, offend God, and thus get killed by God in only a couple of years or so. Now I would personally like to grant more time for these events to play out, but the Bible is perfectly clear that it all has to happen in ten years at most. So I guess it's miracle time. Now, are these enough miracles to happen in less than ten years? Not for the Bible. In Genesis 46.12, after being reminded that Ur and Onan died in Canaan, we learn that Perez, though at most three years old, has already managed to father two sons that he takes with him when the amazing ten years are up and the family moves to Egypt. The Bible doesn't say whether Perez's sons are twins, but to be generous, let us say they were. That means he got a girl pregnant when he was two years, three months old, at most. Now that is impressive. But is this finally enough intrigue? Not for the Bible. Perez, Judah's grandson son, who became a father before he was three, was the ancestor of none other than Jesus. <sighs> for some reason, those who say the Bible is the inerrant word of God never seem to mention this marathon of miracles. I wonder why.